So I'm going to show you how to use a new version of Apple Classroom. Um, you have to do two things first. Number one, you have to make sure you are installed and updated the most recent version of Apple's operating system, which is at least 14.2 or later. And I can do that by going to Settings, then General, and then Software Update. That'll tell you what version you're running. And you should be running, again, at least version 14.2 uh, uh, for this to work. The second thing you need to make sure you've done is you have the the Apple Classroom app in your uh, iPad. Um, if you have the app, uh, you probably have the old version of that app. Um, and if I press and hold with my finger until all of the apps wiggle, I can hit the minus sign to delete that app. And then I can go back into the manager app. And then from here, you should find Classroom and you can tell it to reinstall or update. And once you've done that, that app should get reinstalled on your device. So now I have both the Apple Classroom app updated and my device updated, and I am ready to go. So when I open up Apple Classroom, it'll start off by welcoming me. And I'm gonna see a few different things here. Um, number one, you are going to see any new class that's already set up for you um, in your uh, PowerSchool. So if you have a um, classes in PowerSchool, you should see those classes already set up. Um, but you may also see classes from previous years um, that are in here as well. And until we have done this update, uh, you haven't been able to make any changes or do anything to fix that. And now for the first time we can. So if I go to edit here, um, you can see this class does not let me delete this class. It does. Um, the reason it lets me delete this one is because this is a class I had manually made myself last school year. Um, this is a class that was created for me this year by what was in PowerSchool. So I can go ahead and hit X and delete um, this class. It'll ask me, are you sure? I hit, yep, I'm sure. And it will remove that class. Now the other cool thing that I see that I did not have before is I also now have a plus sign to be able to add classes. So it will by default automatically create classes for you um, based on what is in um, PowerSchool. All the students are in here, um, all the classes are already set up, but if you needed another class, maybe I'm gonna make up something for a small group or maybe I'm gonna do something uh, for an after school club or maybe I just wanna make a separate version of this class, um, on my own, I can now do that by simply hitting the plus sign and it works the way we did before, except it's actually even easier. So what I can do here is I can go ahead and type in my class name. So I'll call this, um, let's call this Wagner's class. And then I have to give it a location. I have to tell it the location is Holman. Otherwise it won't know where um, this is, and I can choose a color, I can choose an icon, uh, whatever I want. So maybe I'll make it blue and hit done. And it will generate this class. And now when I tap on it to open it, there's no students. It used to be that when you would add students, you had to do it in person. You had to give them all code uh, and you uh, to be able to enroll students. Well, all that has gone away. Now when I hit add students, I get a list of every single kid who is in the uh, in the building and I can simply search for that kid's name and be able to add it to it. So if I searched for pirate, I can see Penny the pirate right there. I could tap on her and simply hit add and now she has added to my class. So you can set up your classes ahead of time now instead of having to wait um, to do that uh, in person. So you can now actually pre-set up all of your classes before the year starts, before the semester starts, etc. So now, whenever I am in a class, and let's say Penny is here. And so if Penny is visible and she shows up, she walks into my classroom, um, I open up this class, and it shows me, hey, there's Penny. And now, just like before, I can tap on Penny, I can tell it to open up apps uh, for her, it'll show me all the apps I have available on my iPad that I can pick and choose and then those will get opened on hers. So if I wanted it to automatically launch, 
uh, maybe the Canvas app, maybe students are having some issues finding the app or I wanna make sure they're in the right spot, I can go ahead and say, hey, I want you to open up Canvas and it will automatically launch it on their device. Um, or if I hit done, I can tell Penny uh, to navigate or I can navigate to a specific um, thing that I have. So maybe if I have Safari, I can go through my favorites and choose to have, have a, a certain website that's in my Safari favorites um, to be able to open up for her directly if I want. Uh, which is handy, uh, but then there's also a few other ones. So in books, I can choose a book from my list and have that open up as well, which is handy for uh, our eighth grade social studies department it actually has their textbook in the books app, which is uh, something that could be handy. Uh, I could possibly mute that device if I wanted to, which will turn the sound off. Uh, and again, unmute. Um, I could view screens of all of my devices to see everyone that's in here at one time. I can see what apps they have open here at once by looking at where uh, those apps are listed. Uh, and then whenever I'm finished, I can go ahead and just end this class. And then when I end it, it'll show me, okay, these are the apps that were used uh, and these are the students. And if I click on an app, this tells me um, how many seconds that person was in the app. Or if I click on a student, it shows me all of the apps that that student was in and how many seconds they spent in each one, which is pretty handy. Now I can go ahead and hit done. And that's how I can use uh, Apple School Manager to record um, and, and manage my student's device.